Simply enough, weather is the short-term state of the atmosphere in a given area. Now, weather shouldn't be confused with climate, which is the weather of a given area averaged over a period of time. Climate usually has some more statistical components as well. Most weather occurs in the troposphere due to changes in air pressure. These changes can result in temperature fluctuations via the sun's angle at different latitudes, meaning the angle of the equator is more direct and intense when compared to the higher latitudes. The contrasting temperatures can then give rise to the jet stream or the atmospheric air current. In any case, changes in air pressure can result in different phenomena. More typically, we think of wind, clouds, rain, etc. But extreme changes can also bring about lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, and other such storms. Is it any wonder then that weather, or weathering, is one of the more fundamental processes that shapes the Earth? Like Jeremy mentioned last week, it can break down rocks through different chemical processes. It can be highly destructive via natural disasters. It can influence populations and habitat and ecosystems, and so on. Weather really affects everything we've spoken about in the past few weeks, some direct and others indirect. Let's go down the line. Weather clearly has affected our natural history, such as forming the world and environments we see today. It has affected our human history by dictating where people have settled. It also affects humans via big storms such as Hurricane Sandy. Natural weather processes can also affect the natural health and resilience of our environments through nutrient inputs, drought, flooding, so on. And last, it affects global change and variation. For example, looking back at the ice ages and looking forward to global warming. Understanding these influential processes is important, but how can we do it? Well, modeling and forecasting helps us predict and understand the intricate interactions with the atmosphere at different scales. Forecasting is based on quantitative data from a given weather state that is then used towards prediction. But as you're probably familiar with, the weatherman isn't always right, is he? There's always some degree of uncertainty and error. This is especially true when we look at the bigger region and over a longer scale. And as you can see in this image, this is one reason why climate change models and predictions are so variable. The associate errors may seem large, and this is true because the atmosphere is so chaotic. To tie it all up, local knowledge can be used to develop larger scaled models. It all has to start somewhere, and these developed models can then be used again to make predictions for that region, and depending on the intent of the model. But we should also point out that none of this will be possible without key technological advances, such as satellite imagery and radar.